In this Sean Speaks episode, I get to speak to you from my heart about an important part of parenting, family life, and a parent's mental health and mindset. I want to help you thrive in how you speak to your kids and how you speak to yourself. Sean Speaks is a live teaching I did with a Zoom room filled with my VIP members. It's interactive, it's spontaneous, it's raw and unedited. If you'd like to go deeper with me, visit my website. Words are really, really important. And I want to invite you today to use words in a different way than maybe you have been using them. You know, if you work in a mechanic shop, you uh, you should be familiar with terms like, yeah, the, you know, the radiator, the exhaust manifold, the calibration. And if you work at these shops and you use these terms and uh, maybe uh, nobody understands you or you don't or you don't understand these terms, they're going to be like, what the crap are you talking about? Like, this is what we do here. If you if you follow football, then you probably understand what it means. If I were to say, yeah, the quarterback has no huddle, they were in their, their receiver. Then they ran the receiver in motion through a cover two and a no huddle spread offense. And if you watch football, you kind of know what those terms are. One of the ways I want to help you to grow as parents is how you use your words. And I think that's something I've noticed in my 25 years of kind of listening to parents. It's how some parents use their words in a very effective, subtle way can really connect with our kids' hearts. And this is what I really want to help you with. I want to ask you a question here in a few minutes, and I really am excited to see how you answer it. In fact, I'm going to ask you the question, and I'm going to invite you to use the group chat to type in your answers if you're here with me live. Now, what you'll notice about words is that, like, here's an example of the word jealousy, for example, is that most preschoolers have felt the word jealousy before. Let me re- let me even change that. Every preschooler in the entire universe, including us, feels intense, intense jealousy. They want the toy. They can't have it. They want something they don't want. Even going to like one of those birthday parties is wild because the kids just like swarm around the kid who's opening the presents like they want that. But they don't use the word jealousy. Why? Because they're in preschool. They're in kindergarten. They don't know what the word means. They don't know how to attach this internal feeling to, to uh, something on their mouth that had come out. But then what you'll find is that around sixth grade, there's a percentage of middle school girls and like every other word they say is jealous. Oh, she's so jealous. Oh, he's jealous. You're just jealous of her. Are you jealous? Because they finally figured it out. I have a word to describe like what I'm feeling inside. You might even remember that the first time that your child, when they were younger, you're saying, just be patient, be patient. Can you be patient? And then they say to you, yes, yes, mommy. Yes, daddy. I'll be patient. You probably don't remember that moment in your life, but you probably let up in a huge smile. We're like, oh my gosh, my kid is understanding the word patience. This feels so good. Or when your high schooler, you know, looks you in the eye and says, hey, you, you can trust me. One of the things we do here on our work together is, is something that's very, very normal. We're just here to develop win-win relationships with our kids, right? So we feel like we're winning and we get what we want out of this relationship, but they feel like they're winning too. And we are raising strong, amazing, mature, successful, mindful adults. And so one of the ways I want to help you is I, if you're here with me live, I want to look, I want you to look at question three of your parenting assessment. And we're going to look at the word desires. And now, if you ask a normal parent on the street, Hey, what do you desire in this whole family life? You're, you or, you know, what do you really want to feel inside when you think about family life? What you'll find is that a high percentage of parents, close to 100%, will not have good words to articulate really what they want. And now here we are, because of this tool that I've given you, um, some of you have some amazing words. Like, here's what Brian wrote. You know, Brian wants to feel affection. He wants to feel comfort. He wants to feel companionship, harmony, and impact. Aren't those brilliant words? I mean, this is what this is why this man had children in the first place because he wants to feel these things. And even if you're gonna ask him, in fact, he's here with me live, so I'll ask you now. Brian, use the group chat and just tell me if you want. If you had to narrow it down to your first round draft pick of these awesome words, is there one that you would pick as your number one? Right? Isn't that an interesting question? Brian, can you answer that for us? I see you, man. And so, Steve, here's what Steve wrote Steve wants to feel affection connection, grace, loved, and respect. And so this is the heartbeat. 
you know, of why we have kids, but how we talk about these words really matter. Like, you know, if you ask a normal parent, hey, what do you want to feel? They're going to say these really kind of general words like I want to feel good. I want to feel loved. I want to feel like I'm a good parent. And so what I have found is that when you start using these words with your kids, like imagine Brian leading a family meeting and saying, hey, guys, I just want to have this meeting because I want to connect. You know, I want to I want to have more harmony in the house. I don't know if you guys know this, but like harmony, it's, it's really important to me. They're like, dad, what's harmony? And then you get to explain to them what is harmony? Because just like a, a sixth grade girl can't start using the word jealousy without someone modeling that for her, coaching her, your children aren't going to understand what family harmony looks like until you discuss it, until you talk about it. There's a strong chance that Steve has never shared with his kids. He really wants to feel grace or he wants to feel connection. Now he's now on his list. It says respect. Now he's probably said a gazillion times because that's how a lot of parents are. You need to respect me. That's disrespectful. But it's probably never said in a very inviting, cool vibe tone like, hey, guys, like one of the ways that I feel loved with you guys is by connection and by affection. Like, I just love it when you just come up and you cuddle with me or you let me hug you. Like it just I don't know if you know this because I've never told you. I mean, it just it melts me. I just feel like this is like a dream come true. Like I have a child who is cuddling with me and watching Jumanji and it's just, I'm in this connected spot with you. And then your kids in the beginning, when you start talking this way, they're going to be like, you know, any normal kid, like, what, what the heck is this? Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> Hallmark card. What are you talking about, dad? Right. Because it's new for them. It's like weird, but it's not weird. It's not weird at all. Just like, it's not weird. Like if you give someone an actual Hallmark card, you know, they read it and they don't go to you. Oh, weird. <laughs> weird. No, they don't say that because it's a social norm because we've made Hallmark cards the norm. So Sean, I'm just not good with my words. My love language is not words. Words of affirmation. Okay. But the, but this is what we do here. Yes. With kids more is caught on top, but here is, here is where it gets very juicy, very juicy. Listen in. Okay, here is the question that I want you to use in your group chat. Some of you, if you were to ask your child, your most challenging child, to take this assessment with you in mind, as in the question would be, in my relationship with my parent, yes, we're talking about your eight-year-old taking this, your 18-year-old taking this, what are the desires that your child wants to feel with you? What would they say? Now, that should like blow your mind right now. I hope it's blowing your mind. Now, think about it this way. If you have a, a broken relationship with your own child, there's just not a lot of trust. There's not a lot of connection. There's not a lot of shared desires. Well, here's what might have happened. What might have happened is that your child at a certain age just was trying to get their desires met with you. Maybe your child's words is when they think about the relationship with you is, you know, they want to feel close. They want to feel partnership. They want to feel understood. They want to feel adequate. They want to feel accepted. They want to feel care. And they didn't get it. And so they tried. They reacted. They did their reactions. They acted out and they acted in. And they just came to this part and they, we could be conscious. It could be some conscious and they're just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just not going to have that type of relationship. This parent, friend, this parental figure just doesn't, doesn't do it. I don't have the power to get my desires met in this relationship. This is a win lose relationship where that, if that were to happen, whether these small little ruptures have built this big rupture, or it's just happened over time, have hope. This is why you're here. You're doing the work to repair these ruptures. And there is good, there's a lot of hope here, but just think of it this way. Like that is the deterioration of the relationship. Why do we have so many teenagers that lie to their parents, that don't, that disrespect them, that defy them? Well, defiance is a, it's a symptom 
of a disconnected relationship. Sometimes people call me and they're like, yeah, my, my kid and I have, we're really close. We have a really good relationship. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So what's going on? Well, yeah, my, 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 my teenager is addicted to screens. He's got a bunch of F's in school, uh, doesn't do chores, uh, cusses me out sometimes stays up in the room, disrespects their grandparents when they come over. I'm like, uh, okay. I don't know what fantasy world you live in. That does not sound like a good relationship with a teenager. What the crap are you talking about? Like, where did you come up with this definition of a good relationship with a teenager? No, like that is a win-lose relationship here. That is not a relationship that sounds healthy. A healthy relationship is when both people are working together to get their desires met. And I hope that Sounds normal because every relationship in life and business and romance should feel like a win-win today. As we wrap up this call, and I want you to use the group chat because I want to read what you have to say. Type it now. If your teenager or child were to take this assessment with you in mind, what would they write down? And then you can ask yourself, and I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself if you're here with me live and tell me and answer this question because I really want to hear and just be honest with me. The question that I want to follow up with you is, you know, do you feel like your child is getting their desires met in this relationship with you? Why or why not? What a juicy question. Isn't that an interesting question? I'm like nerding out on that question. Is your child or teenager, you know, getting their desires met in this relationship with you? And so, um, oh, I lost my train of thought of where I was going right there. But I think what I was trying to say is, um, this morning, um, literally about five minutes before I came to this call, I was sitting at the, I was standing at my sink and I was putting something in the sink and, um, uh, my daughter was there, my 14, one of my daughters, my 14 year old, and it's morning time here. So I put my arm around her cause she's just, you know, up getting ready for school, doing something at the sink. And I, you know, give her a little kiss on the head. And she leans into me and she puts her head on my shoulder. This just happened a couple of minutes ago. And she just rests her shoulder, her head, with her beautiful long blonde hair, this very tall 14-year-old girl, just right on my shoulder, just nestled in here at the sink. And we just snuggle. And it just is like the highlight of my day. And it felt so good. But why she did that, I don't know. I don't think she did it for her. I don't think she did. I don't see she's really into cuddling or affection. I think what's happened is that my daughter's not psychic. And I've told her, like, I love these long hugs when you lean into me. And it just melts me. It's just like, it, and I think she did it as a gift to me. So here is the interesting thing here. No one here can read minds or is psychic. So for us to get our desires met, we've got to talk about them in like in a very inviting, um, approachable way. And we want to teach our kids to talk about them because we are not psychic. What you've been writing here in the group chat is just guesses. Isn't that interesting? So when you can raise the word intelligence in your home, when you make words a normal part of your home, not just on Hallmark cards, once a year for $7.99 a card. I mean, what a racket Hallmark has. These cards are like 10 bucks now. It is so nuts. I can't believe how much a card is. So overpriced. So overpriced. It, it's so dumb. So, but you know what? What they have is they have the business of words. So let's not rely on Hallmark to teach our kids to use beautiful words. Parents, thank you for letting me be a positive voice in your life. I love you and I love your family. If you're sick and tired of the same painful patterns in your parenting or the same painful bad behaviors in your kids, then what are you waiting for? Join me in my VIP membership. I'd love to speak with you and give you the specific tools that you need.